So let's show it to you now. Okay, we're going to show you deep learning. We've trained, before you start, we've trained, we've trained over the course of the last couple of weeks, just a couple of weeks, we've trained Tegra X1 to recognize some things that you see uh, on the roads. This is all running, trained with deep learning, and it's running on a deep neural network that's running on TX1. Okay, guys? The, the oh. This is Mike Houston. So the, Has, so the first thing we're going to show you is uh, deep neural networks doing some of the traditional computer vision techniques that you've seen. So in this case, we're actually going to detect crosswalk signs. So you see that we pulled this crosswalk sign. So again, the interesting thing here, as opposed to trying to train something like a hog detector, histogram or oriented gradients, to recognize the diamond, we've just given lots and lots of examples of crosswalks as a tag for the neural network to learn. What's interesting about this technique, compared to traditional computer vision techniques, is the distance and accuracy at which we can detect things. So there's another crosswalk sign coming up that's very far away, right at the edge of what you would naturally be able to see to begin reacting to. So in a case like this, especially if, if it's you know, busy near at high speed, this can feed back into the ADAS system to change your situational awareness, i.e. slow down even below the speed limits if you know that it's, it's a busy pedestrian area. This is actually around the San Jose courthouse. So here's another one where we're grabbing speed limit signs, similar thing, as opposed to sitting there trying to train a specific sign detector, we feed thousands and thousands of examples of signs and it learns the, the classes of signs. So in this case, a 30 mile per hour speed limit sign. Combined with this, we can also do pedestrian detection, including some hard cases. So you see there on the left, we've picked up these pedestrians. So those are sort of the easy ones you'd expect traditional computer vision techniques to get. There's more difficult ones, as Jensen mentioned, which is occluded pedestrians. So if you notice, behind that police car, there's a partially occluded pedestrian. And it turns out it's actually a bicyclist. So we see occlusion, we can't see the bicycle, and so we tag as a pedestrian. And then as soon as we can see the bicycle, it gets redetected and reclassified as a cyclist. So one of the things we can do is detect street lamps. Now, Mike, before you go on, sure. for most people who are watching this, of course, this is computer vision. Uh, the, the video was obviously recorded um, a priori, okay? It's, the video is not live, obviously. But the processing is done live here. The video is going into the Tegra chip, and the Tegra chip has a deep neural network that has been downloaded to it, and it's been trained to recognize a handful of things in this particular case, okay? So whenever, whenever there's a video, whenever there's an image that comes in to TX1, and has one of those objects that it has been trained to recognize in this particular case and just some of the cases, and we'll show you a few more really cool ones, uh, even an included pedestrian, it would recognize it. So the video is not live, but the processing is done live. Go ahead, Mike. So, so in this case, you see that it, it understands that the left turn lane is actually a red signal and that forward traffic can proceed because the signals are green. And so in this particular case, stop there for just a second. In this particular case, really what's, what's really super cool is this. Um, it's a bunch of uh, um, uh, lights. You know, it's a bunch of uh, red and green lights. However, uh, once it recognizes, detects, and, and understands and classifies a particular light, it can also subclassify them into a red light, a yellow light, a green light. Well, and what's actually more subtle about this one is real cameras and automotive today are actually monochrome, so we don't get the benefit of understanding if it's you know, red or yellow or green. We actually need to understand the full position of the light. What you're seeing is actually a color video, but the processing is actually in a monochrome. So we actually have to fundamentally understand, first we have to detect the light, and then we have to understand the class based on the position of lights. Just like in some locales, lights are actually horizontal, not vertical. So again, those become a, another class that, that we've actually learned, and so we can process those classes. Now, you've got a couple of, couple of lights that you haven't figured out. It's yeah, called so, unknowns. Yes, yeah, so these are interesting ones. So them. the reason that they're unknowns is if you actually look at what's happening, we have these very strong oblique views. So the one on the far right, we're just about to pull past. It technically doesn't apply to you. But what happens in this case is we didn't train on oblique lights 
because they don't matter generally for ADAS systems. So they actually fall out of the classifier. So we know it's a type of light, but we haven't been able to classify it down to the next level in, in this specific case. But the ones that are head on, you know, are the ones we concentrate on, and those are the ones we concentrated the training system on. And so some of those unknowns, I'll, I'm going to come back and talk about in just a moment. Go, keep going. Sure. So a particularly difficult challenge for most traditional computer vision systems is hard lighting conditions. Usually in research, you see these pristine sunny day conditions. So this is shot in the UK. So let me explain what you're seeing for folks in the US that haven't seen uh, these types of road signs. So what we're about to come up onto are what are called matrix signs. So they're on a gantry and they're dynamic. So based on driving conditions, there'll be different speed limits. Okay? This is shot in the UK at nighttime in foul weather. And the power of the neural network allows us to handle the uh, ambiguous nature of these lights and still detect uh, quite well. So the first thing that we capture is that on this gantry, there's in fact a speed camera. So we're able to recognize, detect that, and classify it to let you know there's a speed camera here. Well, that's probably the most, most valuable um, <laughs> detection you can imagine. So we've been able to read that this is a 50 limit speed sign. What's particularly difficult actually about these signs is they have an update refresh interval of 60 hertz, and we're driving a 30 hertz camera, so they actually blank out. There are certain frames that actually doesn't have a complete representation of the sign. The other note here is this warning on the left that says Q. So what this means is there's congestion ahead that you're going to need to slow down. That's awfully important information if you're traveling at high speed. So as we continue down the road... Now, if you could just pause for just a second. Sure. Just right now, you saw four objects classified in one scene. There were already four classes right there. It's one gantry, but there was a speed, there was a, a camera uh, um, uh, alert. Uh, there was also uh, the fact that there was going to be a congestion up front. Okay, there, was, there were already multiple things that were being classified. Keep going. So as we continue going, we begin to get in congestion. A couple of things begin to happen. So we actually begin to pick up and recognize that there's actually braking traffic ahead. So if you notice, there's one car that's beginning to brake because the traffic has slowed in front of him. As we continue to close, we begin to get more triggers. So as opposed to relying on a radar system or something else or a collision avoidance system, you can actually detect that there's upcoming traffic and braking that's required. So you can get to smoother stops without harsh stops. All right, that's not, so, that's not too bad. So why don't we go Let's to go. Vegas? So one of the other things we can do is, in this specific case, we're, gonna do, we're doing vehicle detection. And so we can actually subclass vehicles down. So you can make different driving decisions based on the class of vehicle that you have. So in this case, we're classifying the vehicle. So you can see there's two SUVs in front of us. The bar on the bottom represents the confidence level. This is how strong the neural network believes that what it's seeing is, is this class. So it's driving by the wind. So you see that we have a passenger car tagged there on, on the left. An interesting thing happens as we close on this intersection. So we begin to get a, a strong number of detections. And we still have the two SUVs that we've been tracking in front of us, but we've now picked up a heavy truck on our right. It's actually one of these advertisement trucks you guys see drive around here, uh, an SUV. On the other side, we have a truck and a van. So a few frames ago, it probably went by too quick, but. Um, you guys can see it on the hands-on. It actually classified that hotel transport van as a heavy truck because it had just this base initial view. But as we close in on the object and we get more views, the neural network gains more information and is easier to better classify the object. Okay, so the important things, some of the, some of the important things that, that Mike is talking about here, um, if we were, to, if we were to, to engineer each feature detector for each object to recognize, we would have to engineer a feature detector for a van, a feature detector for an SUV, a feature detector for a light truck, a feature detector for a sports car. Now, of course, we're simply having fun here. We're simply having fun. We're going to show you examples of how this could be very useful. But obviously, if you were to detect a fire engine, an ambulance, uh, you would really behave very, very differently. Now, using traditional techniques, you would have to go and engineer each and every one of the feature detectors. In this particular case, um, frankly, we just let the computer went and train and learn these different subclasses. They're all cars, 
but within the subclasses, we also taught it that this particular car is a truck, this particular car is a sports car, this particular car is an SUV. We can teach it this particular car is an Audi, this particular car is a Mercedes, this particular car is a Toyota, okay? So these type of subclassifications from one major classification is one of the things that you can do with basically a deep neural network which each one of the layers is built on top of the other ones. They're all essentially cars. They have wheels, they have windshields, they have grills. A really, really powerful new technique for teaching your computer how to recognize images. Now keep going. So to actually give you a few more statistics on this about the, the data involved, so this is uh, done from 40 hours of captured video and the neural network training time is 16 hours. On, uh, on a Tesla K40 GPU. It's a very fast turnaround time. It's pretty amazing what the neural network figured out how to do in just a couple of weeks' time, right. okay? So and there's a couple of actually new things in this clip. So one of the problems with traditional computer vision is that car on the left zipped by us and so if you purely base your technique on frame by frame or pure optical flow, it actually breaks because the features move so fast and the angle of the car in response to the camera changes so fast. What happens over a couple of frames with the neural network is because we gather those views, we're able to discern very rapidly that it's a passenger car as opposed to anything else. A similar thing when you detect things like pickup trucks that are work trucks, especially off to the side, you may make a decision that they pull out. And so you may make different decisions based on that. But we don't purely have to deal with just front-facing cameras. Sometimes rear-facing cameras are awfully important. So in this specific case, when we get ourselves into trouble and police are following you, you need to know that he's about to turn on your lights and oh my god, you're about to get pulled over. So you better recognize that as a separate thing. I mean, a Thomas car can still break the law. And you need to be able to pull over. So even if, you're, even if it's not your fault, if it's an emergency vehicle in the US, it's a big deal. You need to actually move to the right. Yeah, that so sounds you, great. But what I saw you do just now, it, it appears that we were accelerating. We're trying to pull away. <laughs> so we're, com and so, we're, com we're, coming, all right, all right. we're coming to a stop. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Everybody, Mike Houston, machine learning. All right, this is deep neural nets, deep learning, deep learning. Uh, the neural nets learn itself. It takes the things that we ask it to learn how to classify and breaks it down into layers and layers and layers of the neural net. It's extremely computational intensive, but if you have the computational capability, just imagine what you could do. And so these are just a couple of weeks of training. We've recognized a whole bunch of different types of cars. Uh, we could obviously recognize a whole bunch of different types of pedestrians. Um, we can recognize all kinds of different animals. We can recognize all kinds of stuff. Now, once you become able to recognize uh, your environment around you, and you have an environmental map, you become increasingly situation aware. And after that, of course, it's algorithms uh, that would be applied running on a supercomputer, in this case, a TX1, uh, to help figure out what is the best course of action, uh, depending on what the car sees around it. Now, the way that we do it, this deep learning architecture starts with a supercomputer. And what you're looking at here is the NVIDIA GPU supercomputer, a bunch of CUDA GPUs that are used by the same people who are using, whether it's Facebook or Google or Baidu or, or uh, Yandex or Microsoft or IBM, who are using our CUDA GPU for deep learning. And here you would take a whole bunch of, of uh, image, training data, training sets, uh, with data scientists guide the computer to learn to classify certain objects, okay? The more data that you have, um, obviously, the more types of classes of information, the more types of things you can train uh, the computer to recognize. What comes out of the supercomputer is a trained deep neural net. These are deep neural net parameters. Neurons with weights on the synapses. Those weights are called parameters. In the case that, that um, those, in the case that you just saw, those deep neural net parameters are loaded into the TX1. Now, everything that you saw just now consumed less than 10% of TX1. And we were recognizing a handful 
of classes. So a TX, TX1 was um, processing two megapixels of information at 30 frames per second, classifying a handful of objects, I forget exactly how many, but call it five, six, seven, eight. And it was doing that with less than 10% of the overall horsepower of one TX1. So let's say that one TX1 can process and classify 75 objects at 30 frames per second, then two can classify 150 or so. 150 objects, all kinds of pedestrians, situation, all kinds of cars, all kinds of animals, all kinds of conditions. It can classify for forward-facing camera, rear-facing camera, even side-facing cameras. So now we're classifying and understanding the environment around the car. Now you also saw there were some that we weren't sure what we were looking at. Whenever the threshold is too low and we're not exactly sure what we were looking at, the probability of understanding it is low and so we would tag it as unknown. That particular unknown image would then come back would be sent back to the data center. The data scientists would reclassify and figure out how to learn how to op recognize that object. And of course, one car, not recognizing something, updates the image to the cloud. Retraining happens, and every single car is updated simultaneously. So you imagine, over time, this connected car architecture with a super mobile chip, with deep learning, has the ability to continuously learn the environment around it. It would start off being pretty darn smart, but over time it would continue to learn, just like all of us. Um, this TX1, we put it to the ultimate test. This is uh, the AlexNet. This is basically ImageNet. There are 65,000 neurons in the AlexNet, this network. 65,000 neurons. 60 million parameters, all loaded into TX1, and it's being asked to classify 1,000 classes. This is basically the ImageNet test. Running the AlexNet, which is one of the highest performance ImageNet deep neural networks, we're able to classify 30 images, 30 images per second. 1,000 classes recognizing from 1.2 million images. And so as you can see, we can recognize all kinds of interesting things. Uh, we, we recognize very accurately a German Shepherd. You could see a, a child. There's a hat, a child, and a bicycle in that particular image. Recognizes, of course, a van, bicycles, taxis, and speed lights. Okay? So one of the most important things in TX1, the Drive PX, is the deep learning deep neural net computer vision technology.